Hello and welcome back to the Way to Native Chronicles. Modern firearms and ammunition usually work flawlessly, but there are times when you can get hit with a problem. So you ask questions and people give you all kinds of answers, but it's hard to determine what solutions pertain to your situation and which don't. So what do you do? You pick one solution and try it, hoping it will work, and then if it doesn't, try another, and another, and another, and maybe end up selling the rifle at the end of it all, making it someone else's problem. That can be pretty frustrating and costly too. So I would like to suggest a better path. Acquire an in-depth understanding of what goes on in the functioning of a rifle and cartridge when firing, so you can logically determine the most likely causes for yourself. Your own brain is your best resource, but it must be equipped with understanding to make the best use of it. And that is what this video is going to attempt to provide you with. You'll have to spend a few minutes listening and watching, but if you do, I am sure you will walk away with useful knowledge that can pay dividends for the rest of your life. And of course, if you find this information helpful and wish to support more content like this, I respectfully urge you to click like and subscribe to this channel. So let's get going. What kind of common shooting related problems are we going to delve into here? I think it's best summed up by answers to the following questions. Number one, do you have a rifle that is hard to close the bolt on? Number two, do your cartridges sometimes fail to fire? Number three, do you have a rifle for which the bolt closes easily, but the head of the case sometimes comes off, leaving the remainder inside the chamber? Number four, especially for those who reload ammunition, do your cases tend to crack near the head of the case after firing and not be reusable? These are common symptoms of something referred to as headspace issues, but it's not always clear what is meant by the term headspace. Part of the reason for the confusion is that headspace means different things depending on what the cartridge type involved is. When it comes to headspace, most cartridges fall into one of two broad categories, ball neck and straight walled cases. In this video, we will discuss the ball neck case, the kind that are rimless. This excludes the 3030 that has a rim. Rimless ball neck cartridges are the ones most commonly used in bolt action, hunting and target rifles. I will not be dealing with the belted magnums like the 7mm Remington Magnum, which are special cases. But if you are shooting cartridges like the 30 odd 6, 270, 308, 708, 243, 65 Creedmoor, this video is for you. To understand what headspace is and how it is supposed to work, we need to digress for a minute and think about what is going on when we fire bottleneck cartridges in our rifles. Consideration number one, we have to understand the basic challenge facing the design of the rifle cartridges. They cannot be made to be the exact inside dimensions of the chamber we are putting them into. If they were, getting the cartridge into the chamber would be problematic because the cartridge is not going to be perfectly aligned as you close the bolt to push it in. So we need a little slop. In the case of military rifles and semi-automatics, the designers of the rifles may even increase the amount of slop to prevent jamming in very dirty environments. Soldiers' lives uh, depend on getting the next round chambered quickly and under stressful situations. Hunters too, though not to the same degree, really need that reliability and ease of operation. So the cartridge has to slide in easily every time. So give it a little bit of play. Consideration number two is the fact that we're going to detonate a primer with the firing pin that will cause the gunpowder to burn at a very fast rate. I didn't say explode, it's actually just burning very fast. Creating gases that spike in pressure very rapidly. The idea is for these gases to propel the bullet 
down the barrel and not let any gases escape along the sides of the case back to the shooter. The case that originally entered the chamber, though, was rather loose. So it now has to create a perfect seal against the backward movement of those gases. This is why we use brass for making cases. Brass has two properties that make it the best choice of material for making cases out of. Number one, it's malleable, like it flows under pressure. So it can stretch. This means that the case will expand inside the chamber to create a seal. Number two, Brass will rebound a bit, kind of springy to use a non-technical term, returning somewhat, but not all the way, to its original dimensions after being stretched. This is crucial, because if the case dimensions did not rebound after firing, you would have difficulty extracting the case from the chamber after firing as expanded it. So we have both stretchability and springiness when it comes to brass. Now, with those considerations out of the way, let's take a look at what happens inside your rifle when a case is chambered and the firing pin strikes the primer to ignite it. Things happen fast, but there are discrete steps occurring. Being aware of what these steps are will explain why headspace is so important. First of all, remember what I said about the cartridge needing to fit into the chamber of the rifle somewhat loosely and how it will change its size once the powder begins to burn. Shown here are two pictures of how this might look initially. I am exaggerating some of the dimensions for clarity. In the top picture, you see a cartridge that lengthwise fills out the inside dimensions of the chamber perfectly. By lengthwise, what I mean is that when the bolt is closed against the rear end of the cartridge, the bolt head pushes the entire cartridge ahead so far that the front shoulder of the case comes into contact with the inside shoulder of the chamber. If the length from the shoulder to the rear end of the case was any longer, the cartridge either wouldn't chamber or if the bolt were able to close and force it, the bolt would be hard to close. This is because it is mechanically compressing the length of the cartridge to fit inside the chamber. Bolt actions have a little bit of camming leverage, so you can do this to some extent. Now, that distance from the shoulder to the bolt face is what we call the rifle's headspace when it comes to rimless ball neck cartridges. If you have a rifle that gives you trouble closing the bolt, you might have this problem to fix it the shoulder of the case has to be moved or bumped back just a little to make it a less tight fit. A bit outside the scope of this video, but it should be mentioned, are two other possible causes of the bolt being difficult to close. One of those pertains to the bullet being seated out so far that it begins to engage the rifling of the barrel as the bolt closes. Another is a total case length from mouth of a case to the head being too long to fit in the chamber. This is something that mainly affects those who reload their own ammunition because cases grow a small amount with each firing. As a result, after a few firings, the case may become too long to fit if it has not been trimmed to length first. Jamming a cartridge that needs trimming into the chamber by the camming force of the bolt can result in the case mouth pinching tighter on the bullet. That then leads to increases in chamber pressure, which can be dangerous. For this reason, reloaders need to keep an eye on case lengths and trim their lengths regularly, usually every third or fourth reload. Keep in mind that we are dealing with very tiny differences in dimension here, from rifle to rifle, because manufacturing processes are not perfectly precise. The inner dimensions of rifles tend to vary a little even though they are designed to shoot the same cartridge. The goal, and this is something those who reload their own ammunition are in a good position to do, is for that fit inside the chamber to be as perfect as it can be. If the length from shoulder to case head is too long, you stress the cartridge and make the bolt hard to close. So you want to have it just right. 
Remember what I said about the inner dimensions of the rifle chambers varying slightly? The makers of cartridges are aware of this too. They want you to buy their ammunition, so if for some rifles shooters have trouble closing the bolt, consumers will begin to avoid ammunition made by that manufacturer. They don't want that, so they will dimension their cartridges to fit the worst case, smallest inside dimension, chambers out there. This means that the cartridge dimensions may be a bit small, uh, smaller than ideal for your rifle, since yours isn't necessarily the worst case. Going the other way, uh, a little excess in that shoulder to case head dimension is okay, but if it's too long, the brass case will have to stretch so much that it results in the head of the case separating from the main body. This is the case with most factory ammunition people use in their rifles and is the scenario depicted by the figure at the bottom. When the space from shoulder to case head inside the chamber is too long, typically the case separates just ahead of the head. The reason it separates here is because there is a lot more meat, brass, in the head of the case. That part won't stretch, but the thin walls ahead of the case head will. To get a grasp of this, we have to understand the way a cartridge moves when inside the chamber, just prior to the primer igniting. This is what the next series of illustrations will attempt to clarify. First, the cartridge is pushed ahead into the chamber by the bolt, right? That results in the head of the case sitting in contact with the bolt face. If the head space is too liberal, there is now space left between the shoulder of the case and the inside shoulder of the chamber, as shown here. So what happens now when the firing pin is released and strikes the primer? Well, if the head space is too long, it's a bit like kicking a soccer ball. The entire cartridge moves ahead due to the impact of the firing pin until that movement is stopped by the shoulder of the case hitting the inside shoulder of the chamber. That movement has now reduced the striking force of the firing pin exerted on the primer and could result in the primer not detonating, making for misfires periodically. Not good, right? But let's say in spite of the Headspace letting the cartridge move ahead a little, the firing pin's force was still sufficient, at least this time, to cause the primer to ignite. What happens now? Well, the firing pin has now moved the entire cartridge ahead with the shoulder of the case tight against the inside shoulder of the chamber, leaving a little space now between the head of the case and the bolt face. The powder now begins to burn, resulting in a sharp increase of pressure due to the gases being created. What happens when those pressures start? What happens next is something that even reloaders of ammunition frequently fail to understand. The pressure generated is exerted in all directions. It's exerted forward, rearward, and perpendicular to the bore. This pressure affects the weakest and most easily stretched portion of the case first. Next, as we wanted to, the bullet begins to move ahead down the barrel, but since the case's head is not in contact with the bolt face because of the head space problem, the unsupported head of the case now moves backward until it is finally stopped by contact with the bolt face. For the head of the case to move that amount, some give has to take place somewhere and it's in a very small region of the case. Keep in mind that the brass is very thick at the uh, head of the case, as I mentioned before. So those uh, outward forces that are pressing the case wall against the inside of the chamber won't be affecting the head portion of the case. So all the gripping pressure of the case wall against the inside of the chamber is gonna occur on the forward section of the case not on the rear. That part essentially has got no traction on it. That's the part that can slip. Now with all that stretching taking place in a, such a tiny region, guess where the brass fails? Yeah, right ahead of the case at where the walls begin to get thin. So when a chamber has too much head space, case heads may not separate the first time, but it, if you take a 
thin piece of uh, paper clip uh, wire or something like that and uh, bend it into a little hook and insert that inside the case. Uh, you can scratch the inside of the case lengthwise and uh, it'll hook very slightly when it encounters the slight valley that's forming on the inside of the case. That's an indication that uh, your brass is beginning to thin in that region. So you can use that to check it. A case that uh, head that separates can ruin your day or your hunt because only the case head gets extracted when you cycle the action for another round, leaving the rest of the case stuck inside your chamber. Solutions. So to wrap up, if you're getting misfires or if your cases are coming apart at the heads, what avenues are there for solving this problem? That depends a bit on if you're able to reload your own ammunition. If you don't reload, you may have to bring your rifle to a gunsmith and have the headspace changed, and it can be done. If you do reload, the headspace may be so overly large that you still have to bring the gun to a gunsmith, just like the non-reloading guy, but it's more likely that you can solve the problem by adjusting your reloading technique. You can do the latter because with a gun having a headspace problem, the head of the cases do not always separate on the first firing. For this reason, if you first fire the cartridges you have on hand, you can then use those once fired cartridges in the way best suited for your gun from then on. It's that repeated stretching and shortening uh, that can result in the, in the case head separation failures. So those after fired cases are now stretched to reflect the inside dimensions of your rifle's chamber. It's outside the scope of this video to get into too much detail on the subject, but suffice to say the dyes you use when processing your cases can be adjusted so that the length of the shoulder uh, to case head is not changed. So this results in uh, your cartridge now being uh, reloaded to perfectly fit your rifle. What has to be kept in mind when it comes to using custom length cases like that though is that the cartridges you produce may not be suitable for everyone else's rifle. It just suits yours. It might be uh, uh, a bit too long for someone else's uh, rifle and they'll have trouble closing the bolt. So uh, perhaps at another time I'll make a video going into this uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, if if uh, you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. So that kind of covers the subject of headspace and the uh, kind of problems it can result in. I hope you enjoyed this video. From the Way to Native Chronicles, I want to wish you God bless and we'll catch you next time. Did you like this video? If you did, I think you're going to like this one right over here. So check it out. And I appreciate your subscribing if you haven't done so already. Remember to do that while you're watching this next video. Click like, it all helps us out for this channel. Catch you next time.